today my topic that I would like to share with you is calm in the storm. A few days ago, one of my friends, Raj Shekhar, master from UK, shared a great post on WhatsApp. It said, according to psychologists, there are four types of intelligence quantified by quotients. One, intelligence quotient. This is the measure of our comprehension ability, which we all know, like solving maths, memorizing things, and recalling subject matters, etc., etc. Number two, emotional quotient. This is the measure of our ability to maintain peace with others, like you know, be responsible, be honest, respect boundaries, and you know, be humble, genuine, and etc. The third one is a social quotient, and this is the measure of your ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period. So my dear friends, normally your EQ represents your character and your SQ, which is your social quotient, represents your charisma, but that's not enough. Now there's a fourth one, my dear friends, a new paradigm. And this is the adversity quotient, the measure of your ability to go through a rough patch in life and come out without losing your mind. Adversity quotient determines who will give up in the face of troubles and may abandon families and societies. My dear friends, what we are going to talk in the next 40 minutes is how do we sharpen our adversity quotient? Or in other words, how can we train ourselves to maintain calm in the storm or maintain our sanity when we are going through a rough patch in our lives and being swept away by the storm of negative emotions. Dear friends, this topic is apt for any situation in life and all the more now, because in the current context of Corona, many professionally successful people are going through bouts of depression because they haven't seen such an unprecedented situation and thus are unprepared for adversity. Most of us, experience a life full of wonderful moments and difficult moments. But for many of us, even when we are most joyful, there's always a fear behind our joy. We fear that this moment will end or we may not get what we need or we may lose the people we love or that we are not safe, anything. Often our biggest fear is the knowledge that these bodies will cease functioning one day. So even when we are surrounded by all the conditions for happiness, our joy is not complete. Many of us often find ourselves thinking of things that stir up feelings of fear and sorrow and negative emotions. We have all experienced some suffering in our past, my dear friends, and we often recall our past suffering. We revisit the past, reviewing it and watching the films of the past. But if we revisit these memories without mindfulness or awareness, every time we watch those images, we suffer again and again and again. We likewise can prepare for the future without getting consumed by our minute plans. Often we either don't plan at all, that's one extreme, or we get caught up in obsessive planning because we fear the future and its uncertainty. The present moment is where we need to operate from. When you are truly anchored in the present moment, you can plan for the future in a better way. Living mindfully in the present does not preclude you from making good plans. It only means that you know there is no use losing yourself in worries and fear that's concerning your future. If you are grounded in the present moment, my dear friends, you can bring the future into the present and you can have a deep look without losing yourself in the anxiety and uncertainty. In fact, you can learn from the past and plan for the future in the best way if you are grounded in this present moment. Don't go back to the past, my dear friends. It's only a ghost. It's unreal. And whenever we recognize that these are only movies and pictures that we play again and again and again and not reality, we are free. And that's the practice of mindfulness, my dear friends, because the present is free from fear. When we are not fully present in the, we are not really living, my dear friends. We are not really here. 
either for our loved ones or even for ourselves. If you're not here, then where are we? We are running and running and running, even during our sleep, my dear friends. We run because we are trying to escape from our fear. We cannot enjoy life if we spend our time and energy worrying about what happened yesterday or what will happen tomorrow. If we are afraid all the time, we miss out on the wonderful fact that we are alive and can be happy right now. When we come back to here and now, we recognize the many conditions of happiness. They're already existing here in the now. The practice of mindfulness, it is the practice of coming back to the here and now, to be deeply in touch with ourselves, not only with ourselves, but with our life too. But we have to train ourselves to do this. This is not going to come automatically, my dear friends. Even if you're very intelligent, and even if you grasp the principle straight away, you know how to do it. It's not going to do the work. We still have to train ourselves to really live this way. We have to train ourselves to recognize the many conditions for happiness that are already here. When you practice being aware of your breathing, you generate the energy of mindfulness. And my dear friends, this is called mindfulness of breathing. When you practice mindful breathing, the energy generated out of it helps reduce the tension in your body and your feelings. There may be tension in your body and there may be strong emotions in you like fear, anger, and despair. The energy of mindfulness is embracing, it's calming, it releases all the tension and suffering. And this energy calms you and eases your fear, my dear friends. Mindfulness, it carries within it the energy of concentration. So remember that the seed of concentration is also in you. There are practice of concentration that can liberate us from fear, anger, and despair, generating the energies of mindfulness and concentration in our daily life we learn to transform our fear and anger and let go of all the sufferings, my dear masters. And then along with mindfulness and concentrations comes that great thing which we call insight. Insight is wisdom. Insight is understanding. The seed of wisdom of perfect understanding is there in each one of us, my dear masters. Awareness is mindfulness. Awareness is concentration, and awareness is insight too. In fact, in the first quarter of this year, I had conducted several workshop series on awareness because it's so important to us in our lives. I conducted in three languages, my dear friends, Hindi, English, and Telugu. If anyone is interested, you're free to visit my YouTube channel, which is called Saroja Self-Empowerment Workshop, and you'll find all my workshops there. Today, we are talking about this topic, calm in the storm. What kind of storm are we talking about? Let's think about it for a minute, my dear masters. Every time we feel a strong wave of fear, anger, or jealousy, we can do something to take care of this negative energy so that it doesn't destroy us. When we have a strong emotion like fear or despair, it can be very overwhelming. But with practice, we know we can learn how to embrace our fear because we know that in each one of us, there is the seed of mindfulness. And if we practice touching that seed every day, all the time while walking, sitting, breathing, smiling, eating, doesn't matter what you're doing, we begin to cultivate that energy of mindfulness. And then anytime we need that energy, we just touch that seed and right away, the energy of mindfulness will come up when you need and we can use it to embrace our emotions. If we succeed, just once in doing so, we'll have a little more peace and we will be less afraid of that strong emotion the next time it comes up. Suppose you have a lot of pain, sorrow or fear deep down in your consciousness. Many of us, as you know, have got big blocks of pain and suffering in the depth of our consciousness that we cannot bear to look at. 
we have to keep ourselves very busy to ensure that these unwelcome guests do not keep coming up and pay us a visit. So what do we do? We busy ourselves with other guests. And what are these other guests? We pick up a magazine, we pick up a book to read, we turn on the television, or we play music or anything just to make sure that these unwelcome guests do not come up because we do not have the courage to face them. We do anything and everything we can to fill our attention with something. And my dear friends, that is the practice of repressing. Most of us adopt this embargo response. We do not want to open the door for our fear, our sorrow, our anxiety, or our depression to come up. We just don't want to face it. So what do we do? We bring in all manner of other things to occupy us. And there are always plenty of things available to help us distract ourselves from what's happening inside. There are many ways we can entertain ourselves, especially watching television. That's what most of the humanity is doing at the time. Television can be used as a kind of drug, my dear friends. When the suffering in us is too much to bear, we sometimes turn on the television set to forget our pain. Isn't that what we do? It fills our living rooms with images and sounds. Even if we are not watching, even what if we are watching is not satisfying, we often don't have the courage to get up and turn off the TV. Have you wondered why, my dear friends? Because although it is uninteresting or even disturbing sometimes, we think it's better than going home to ourselves and touching the pain within. So what have we adopted? Distraction. Distraction is the policy for many of us. It's such a good way of not really facing who we are or what we are suffering inside, my dear masters. However, there are several simple methods of strongly or taking care of the strong emotions. And one of those is belly breathing, my dear friends. Breathing from the abdomen. When we are caught in a strong emotion like fear or anger or any negative emotions that you're unable to bear, our practice should be to bring our attention down to our abdomen. To stay on the level of the intellect is not safe, my dear friends. So what do I mean when I say stay at the level of intellect? That means don't start trying to make sense of your negative emotions. Don't start trying to reason at that time. It's not safe. Strong emotions, they are like storm. And to stand in the middle of storm is not only dangerous, but stupid, my dear friends. Yet, that's what most of us do when we get upset. We stay there right out in the storm of our feelings. And what happens then? These storm of our feelings, they overwhelm us. Instead, what we have to do is to ground ourselves by bringing our attention downwards. My dear friends, if you are, you are in a region where you, storms happen often, then you would know that the best way of avoiding storm or being out of the main of the storm is just to ground. And that's very much applicable even for ourselves. So what do we have to do? Focus on our abdomen and practice mindful breathing. Just giving all your attention to the rise and fall of your belly, my dear friends. The rise and the fall of the belly. This is also a kind of meditation. When you do not have the opportunity to close your eyes and meditate and observe your breath, or you are too overwhelmed to observe your breath in closed eyes meditation, which normally is the case when you are at work or when you are outside, it's not possible all the time that you find a place and sit down, close your eyes and meditate. And at that time, when you are caught in the storm of negative emotions, my dear friends, straight away, the best practice is to bring your focus onto your abdomen and practice mindful breathing. So how do you make it through the storm? That is the question. Now we know what the storm is, but how do you make it? So when you look at a tree during a storm, my dear masters, you see that its branches and leaves are all swaying back and forth violently in the strong wind. You have the impression that the tree will not be able to withstand the storm. You are like that when you're gripped by a strong emotion. Like the tree, you feel vulnerable. 
you can break at any time. But if you direct your attention down to the trunk of the tree, don't look at the branches at that time because they will be swaying back and forth violently. Instead, direct your attention down to the trunk of the tree, you will see things differently. You see that the tree is solid and deeply rooted in the ground. If you focus your attention on the trunk of the tree, you realize that because the tree is firmly rooted in the soil, it cannot be blown away. Each one of us similarly in a sitting or a standing position is like the tree. When the storm of our emotions is passing by, should not stay in the thick of the storm, the level of the brain or the chest. That means no thinking or feeling. When you are overwhelmed by strong emotions, don't stay there, my dear masters. It's too dangerous. Instead, bring your focus down to your navel. That is the trunk of your tree, the most solid part of yourself, and practice mindful breathing. Become aware of the rise and fall of your abdomen. Doing this in a stable position, such as the sitting position, you'll feel much better. Just breathe. Don't think of anything. Breathe through the moment. Breathe through the rise and fall of your abdomen. Practice this way for 10 or 15 minutes, and that's plenty. And the strong emotion will pass through very softly, my dear masters. This is a two-step process. The first part is calming, and then looking deeply to transform is the second part. When you have enough energy of mindfulness, you can look deeply into any emotion and discover the true nature of that emotion. If you can do that, you will be able to slowly transform that emotion. Of course, emotions have deep root in us. They are so strong. Sometimes we think we will not survive them. If we let them go like that, we deny and we suppress them until finally they explode and they cause hurt to ourselves, not only ourselves, my dear friends, to others as well. But an emotion is just an emotion. It comes, it stays for a while, and then it goes away. Then why should we hurt ourselves or others just because of one emotions? We're so much more than our emotions. If we know how to practice looking deeply, we will be able to identify and uproot the sources of our painful emotions. Just practicing embracing the emotions can already be very helpful. If during the critical moment when the emotion is there, we know how and where to take refuge, if we are able to breathe in and out and focus our attention on the rise and fall of our abdomen just for 15 or 20 minutes, then the storm will roll away and we will be aware that yes, we can survive this storm of this emotion. When we succeed in surviving strong emotions, we experience a more solid peace of mind because once you have got this practice in your hand, you're no longer afraid because if you have done it once, you can do it again. The next time a strong emotion rises, it becomes easier because we already know that we have done it before and we can survive it. If we can relax when our strong emotions come, my dear friends, then we don't pass this fear on to our children and to our future generations. But if we stay with our fear, suppressing it, and then one day letting it explode, we're sharing that fear with the young people around us and they will consume it and not only consume it and they will pass it on. But if we know how to handle our own fear, we will be more able to help our loved ones and our young ones handle theirs. We can be with them when they are going through that and say, darling, breathe in, breathe out with me. Pay attention to the rise and fall of your belly. Because they have seen you do this, they will be more likely to listen to you. Because you are there, and you offer your energy of mindfulness and your solidity, your child or your partner will be able to cross the white water of these emotions, my dear masters. He or she will know 
that with her loved ones at her side, she like you also can survive the strong emotions. This is how you pass, how to remain this calm in the storm from generations to generations, modeling calm in the face of fear and teaching young people how to weather their own storm. You're teaching a very valuable skill that might even save their lives in the future. My dear masters, I'm sure you're all aware of the suicidal rate that's increasing more in the youngsters, more in the students. And this is the skill they need to learn very early on in, the, in their lives. Many of us spend a lot of time acting out of fear. And what is this fear? This is the fear of the past or the present. And in doing that, we affect each other. By affecting each other, we're affecting the larger society. So this is have, have having a very significant impact on the whole society in general. And we create a culture of fear. And when fear comes up, we're upset, we're worried. And the first thing we need to do is first to acknowledge that fear. Nothing goes away, my dear masters, by not acknowledging. The first part is acknowledge before you can do anything. We can recognize and embrace it rather than trying to act it out. All around us, people are afraid. And even at the time of this particular COVID situation, so many people are coming to counseling just because they're afraid. So all around us, people are afraid and they're acting out of fear. In the midst of all this fear, we are all longing for peace and security. Sometimes it's tempting to make fun of the fear of others because it reminds us of our own fear. We have all been taught to keep our fear out of sight and unacknowledged. How can we let go fear and relinquish the anger and violence that animates in us all the time? My dear masters, we do not like feeling afraid. No one likes feeling afraid it, often we hold on to our fear and that fear turns into anger. We are angry that we are afraid. We are angry at whatever or whoever we perceive as causing our fear and keeping us afraid. Some people spend their whole lives trying only to take revenge on whatever or whoever they think caused their suffering. And this kind of motivation can only bring suffering not only to others, but also to the ones who feel it, my dear friends. In our society, there is so much fear. There's so much suffering. There is so much violence, despair, and confusion. But at the same time, my dear masters, there is also the beautiful blue sky that you see after the storm. Sometimes the blue of the sky reveals itself to us entirely. Sometimes we are not that lucky, so it reveals only half of itself. Sometimes just a little bit of blue peaks here and there. And sometimes it could be none at all. Storms, clouds, and fog, they hide the blue sky. The kingdom of heaven, which is the peace within, it can only be hidden by a cloud of ignorance or by a tempest of anger, violence, or fear. But if we practice mindfulness that I've been talking about, it is possible to be aware that even if the feather is, weather is very foggy, even if the weather is cloudy or stormy, the blue sky is always there for us above the clouds. Remember, it's always there. It hasn't gone anywhere. Remembering this keeps us from sinking into despair. If we know how to transform our despair, our violence, our fear, the vast blue sky will reveal itself to us and to those around us very soon. The basic condition for touching our inner peace is freedom from fear, despair, anger, and various type of cravings. Mindfulness practice, it allows us to recognize the presence of the cloud, that fog, and that storm that I've been talking about all along. But it also helps us recognize the blue sky behind all of it. 
we all have enough intelligence, courage, and stability to help the blue sky reveal itself again and again when we want. If we want safety, we have to build it, my dear masters. What do we build safety with? Currently, we are building safety with forts, bombs, airplanes. Those are not going to take off here. In fact, they will more likely increase it. There must be something else then, a way to take genuine refuge in so that we can really feel safe. We have to learn to build safety with our in-breath and with our out-breath. We have to learn to build safety with our steps, with our way of acting, with our way of reacting, with the way of our response, with our words, and with our effort to build a healthy communication. So my dear friends, how do we transform this fear into love, sorrow, fear, and depression? They're all like kind of garbage. But these bits of garbage are part of our real life. They're not imaginary. And hence, we must look deeply into their nature. We can practice so as to turn these little bits of garbage into beautiful flowers. We should not throw anything out because if you try to throw them, there's more that's ready to come back to fill that space. All we have to do is to learn the art of composting, like how we do composting in the garden. So we have to transform our garbage into beautiful flowers. Practice mindful breathing. Practicing mindful breathing, it helps us experience our joy and our peace. When we are concentrating and focusing on our breath, my dear masters, we are not carried off by the thoughts about either the past or the future. We are free of thinking. And we are, when we are lost in thoughts, we definitely can't live in the present. So when we bring our attention to our in-breath, we're not thinking. We're not really thinking even about our in-breath. So every time we say focus on your in-breath doesn't mean we're thinking about it. It is a direct experience because we are living our in-breath. Our in-breath is not a thought. It is a reality. We are living the reality that is our in-breath. Breathing in, I enjoy my in-breath. So when you're breathing this way, taking every breath, and enjoying your in-breath in mindfulness, we can see many things. We can touch the miracle of life because when we breathe mindfully, we realize that we are alive. To be alive is a fantastic thing, my dear masters. To be present here and now breathing is no less than a miracle. To be alive is one of the greatest of miracles of mankind. Parents holding their newborn child, they know this. People on the deathbed know this. To be alive, breathing, taking steps on the planet is a wonderful thing. We don't need to drink some wine or you know, host a great dinner party to celebrate life. You don't need those things. We can celebrate in every moment with our breathing and our steps that we take along with this breathing with mindfulness and concentration, we can get in touch and live every moment of our daily lives as a miracle. We can do it right now, today. We don't have to wait for tomorrow, my dear masters. The energy of mindfulness, it can be generated anytime, anywhere, with mindful breathing, mindful walking, doing everything mindful. That energy brings us deeply in touch with the wonders of the life, and that's what brings happiness in our life, my dear masters. Our practice is very concrete, though it is very simple. When you breathe in and really pay attention to your in-breath, there will be a change right away. You are more there and you are in touch with your reality. When you practice walking meditation, when you're walking, and if you start walking, being very mindful, Immediately, you're able to be in touch with the, your reality in a deeper way. And you begin to live your life in a deeper sense. 
how closely you are in touch with this reality depends on the way you breathe and you connect with yourself, my dear masters. Now, fear can accumulate in our body. We all know that. And that can cause stress and it can cause tension. Rest is a preconditioning for healing. When animals in the forest get wounded, my dear friends, what do they do? They find a place to lie down and they rest completely for many, many days. They don't think even about food or anything else. They just rest because they know that's what they need. They just rest and they're able to heal themselves quite naturally. But when we humans become fearful and we are overwhelmed with stress, what do we do? We run to the pharmacy, try to get more drugs, but we rarely have the wisdom to stop on our running, stay put. We don't know how to help ourselves. Deep relaxation is an opportunity for our body to rest, for our body to heal and restore itself. We relax our body, give our attention to each part in turn and send our love and care to every cell. Deep relaxation of the body should be done at least once a day. It can last, you know, 10 to 15 minutes or whatever time you have. You can do it in bed at night or you can do it in the morning. You can do it whenever it's convenient in the living room or even when you are at work. If you have a place to sit down and you're going through this storm of emotions, then very important for you at that time to sit down and look at how to relax yourself. It's also possible to practice deep relaxation in sitting position at work, I said. You know, you can be at your office desk. If you, if you fear and your anxiety is keeping, up, keeping you up at night, that's what's happening, my dear friends, for most of us. The whole day is going through trauma, a lot of emotions. And by the time the night comes, we're all uptight. Anxiety, fear is just wrapping us up. But remember, the practice of deep relaxation by getting in touch with our breath can help. Lying awake. You can enjoy the practice of total relaxation and follow your breathing in and out. Sometimes it can help you also get some sleep. But even if you don't sleep, it's fine. It will still nourish you and allow you to rest. It's very important to allow yourself to rest, my dear masters. And this relaxation practice that I'm about to guide you, you can even be more deeply restful than the rest you get it in your sleep. Because even if you sleep in that position, you'll be only filled with nightmares or any other intense dreams. So my dear masters, the next few minutes, I'm going to take you into a deep relaxation exercise that will help you anytime when you're going through the storm of this emotion causing anxiety and stress. This is going to help you. So lie down on your back. If you have a position where you can just lie down with your arms at your side, Otherwise, if you're sitting in a chair, just relax yourself, my dear masters, whichever positions you're sitting, make yourself comfortable. Allow your body to relax. Be aware of the floor beneath you. Or be aware of the chair beneath you that you are sitting. Just be comfortable. And as you become aware of the floor beneath you or the chair under you, if you're lying down on the floor, be aware of the contact of your body with the floor or with the surface that you are lying on. Allow your body to sink into the floor or the bed or the chair that you are on. Become aware of your breathing now. Breathing in, breathing out. Be aware of your abdomen rising and falling as you breathe in and out. rising and falling of your abdomen as you breathe in and out. 
rising and falling of your abdomen as you breathe in and out. Now breathing in, slowly bring your awareness to your eyes. Breathing out, allow your eyes to relax. Allow your eyes to sink back into your head. Let go of all the tensions in the tiny muscles around your eyes. Our eyes allow us to see a paradise of shapes and colors. Allow your eyes now to rest. Send love and gratitude to your eyes. Breathe in and out. Breathing in, bring your awareness to your mouth, my dear masters. Breathing out, allow your mouth to relax. Relax the tension around your mouth. Your lips are the petals of a flower. Let a gentle smile bloom on your lips. Smiling releases the tension in dozens of muscles around your face. Feel the tension release in your cheeks, your jaw, your throat. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathing in, bring your awareness to your shoulders. Breathing out, allow your shoulders to relax. Let them sink into the floor. Let all the accumulated tension flow into the floor. You carry so much on your shoulders. Let them relax as you care for your shoulders. Breathing in. Bring your awareness to your arms. Breathing out, relax your arms. Let your arms sink into the floor, your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands, fingers, all the tiny muscles. Let them relax. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly bring your awareness to your heart. Breathe in. Breathing out, allow your heart to relax. You may have neglected your heart for a long time in the way you work, in the way you eat, in the way you manage your anxiety and stress. Breathe in. Breathe out. Your heart beats for you day and night. Embrace your heart with mindfulness, with tenderness. Take care of your heart. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly bring your awareness to your abdomen. Breathing in, breathing out. Be aware of the abdomen rising and falling. As you pay your attention on the rising and falling of your abdomen, your whole body is feeling light, like duckweed floating on the water. You have nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. You're as free as the cloud floating in the sky. Just follow your breathing. Now slowly become aware of your arms and legs. You may want to move them a little and stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. If you're doing this practice before sleep, 
just continue to follow your breathing in and breathing out. If you're doing the practice as a break during the day, when you feel ready, just you can slowly sit up. My dear masters, this was a short preview of a deep relaxation exercise that you can do at any time, even at office desk, by slowly focusing on the breathing and at the end, coming to your abdomen and slowly being aware of the rising and falling of your belly. Now take a moment and be aware of your breath as you continue with your next activity, whatever you want to continue. Now, my dear masters, with this practice of deep relaxation, remember that now you have a tool that whenever you feel that you are being swept away in the storm of negative emotions, you have a tool that you can practice even with open eyes. To observe your breath, you do not have to close your eyes, my dear masters. And before I conclude my talk today, I just want to summarize some common emotions that we all go through. And why do they, these common emotions, these common negative emotions become monsters? Because, my dear masters, we do not understand these emotions when they come and attack us in the first time. One of the most common negative emotions that we all go through is anger. What is anger, my dear masters? Anger is nothing but non-acceptance of things which are beyond our control. But mind, masters, just mind it. If only you can accept the things are beyond your control, that's fine. But only if you can accept those things beyond your control, that that anger transforms into tolerance. And that negative emotion has now become your skill. What is fear, my dear masters? Fear is nothing but non-acceptance of uncertainty. You have no control on uncertainty, but you have control on the non-acceptance bit. If you accept that uncertainty, then my dear masters, that uncertainty becomes adventure. And so you have converted a negative emotion from fear to adventure, which you will certainly enjoy. Another negative emotion that causes storm in our life all the time is hatred. What is hatred, my dear masters? Hatred is nothing but non-acceptance of a person as he is. You are not able to accept a person the way he or she is. That is why you feel hatred for the person because you want to control everyone and turn them around as per your expectation. And when that can't be done, it turns into hatred. So if that non-acceptance of the person, whoever it is, if you can start accepting that personal person unconditionally, that hatred turns into unconditional love, my dear masters. And what is unconditional love? Unconditional love is nothing but accepting any person or any situation in your life just the way it is and allowing this creation to be what it is, just to be. And that's what unconditional love is, my dear masters. And before I conclude this talk, and before I take any question answers, I just wanted to say a few words. And this is to my beloved sir, Patri sir. I'm quite grateful to you, Patri sir, for giving me this opportunity today to share my views about this storm and how to calm it on this great platform of DIYD. Earlier in the session, I've heard such great masters playing music, music and such great masters with their wisdom sharing session. But the one wisdom sharing session, which I would definitely mention is the one from Dena Madam. And Dena Madam did mention that Sitama's cosmic energy is very much required at this time when the earth is going through this ascension and especially when the earth mother needs us all to come along together, giving the positive energy. And Dena Madam must have done her part by having the vision and writing the book. But 
I didn't, didn't realize that I have done much greater part in that by bringing that book in the form of wisdom sharing session in the three languages and taking this cosmic energy of Sita Ma and the love for this mother earth and the nature to thousands of people throughout the world. And I think, Patri sir, this is one of my greatest purpose in life. I think my being on this earth planet at this time was this was one of my greatest purpose. And for that, I will always be indebted to you for giving me that PMC platform and the opportunity to pass that great wisdom sharing session to all. Along the journey of my wisdom sharing, I do not know when I became one with Sita Ma. I never saw any difference between me or Sita Ma. And that feeling is still continuing.